Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's first video to the extended European outlook for today's first video. So this is your 30 day slash 42 day uh, extended European outlook. I'll get on back for you in a moment. Uh, just to say there was no 6 m forecast. Don't worry about that in a second, but we'll have a 10 to 14 day with all other regular features on the way later on today. So please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much everyone for doing that. Thank you so much to ecmdover.int for supply the charts and the data as well. Yes, I fell asleep last night, yesterday evening, and actually slept right through to this morning. <laughs> and something like 10, 11 hours. I was ready for it, though. But because uh, of that, no 6 a.m. forecast. So sorry about that. It will be back tomorrow, though. Uh, right, okay, let's start off with week one. Uh, mean sea level pressure anomaly takes us through the week that we're currently in, which is the uh, 26th of May to the 2nd of June. So this week's going to see the low pressure in control across northern and west Europe. High pressure down towards Spain. Uh, that's the Azores high, of course. Uh, we'll be bringing in a westerly wind across Europe, something like that. So high pressure across southern Europe, low pressure across northern Europe, much more typical sort of westerly type pattern then uh, compared to what we've had throughout uh, most of the spring this year. 500 millibar height anomaly showing below average heights, low pressure away to the north, above average heights, high pressure down to the south. It is a classic sort of westerly flow. We have got a bit of a trough through the eastern portion of Europe, though, so I assume the jet stream is uh, digging southwards a little bit like that, probably because of its blocking high up towards uh, northern Russia. So now the temperature doubly is looking uh, this week. Man. So really hot down across Spain and Portugal. Heat, uh, heat is already starting to build there with temperature anomalies of 6 to 10 degrees above average. North Africa as well is uh, looking very, very hot. Um, Another western part of Europe generally above average. So we've got the UK and Ireland a little bit above average, particularly further south you go. France is a bit above average and more so across uh, the south of France, around the Côte d'Azur. Uh, into the Mediterranean, again, many areas are hotter than average from Italy, particularly back to Spain, obviously, and into uh, Portugal as well. And then the far north and northeast of Europe looks quite uh, warm to hot as well, really hot into Russia by the look of it, and into northern parts of Scandinavia, Nordic regions, Finland, Sweden, Norway, especially the north coming out above average. It's not hot everywhere, though. So you have got southern parts of Scandinavia uh, looking cold and average. Denmark, some of Sweden, for example, a bit cold and average. Um, through the Baltic Sea towards Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania. They've got a mix, but generally a bit on the cool side. And they're particularly coming down the eastern side of Europe. So anywhere from like Ukraine, Belarus, south into Romania, around the Black Sea. And then going even southwards and back towards Greece and Turkey. Generally, it's a slightly below average, uh, below average of Greek kinds. Bear in mind, these are anomalies to average. So if it's one to three degrees or about a degree below, average in Greece up to the end of May. It's still going to be very warm to uh, hot. <coughs> So, sorry, everyone. Our precipitation uh, wise, we look like this. So, we've got uh, much of southern Europe drier than average France, Spain, Portugal, into the central bowl of the bed, through Italy, over the Asiatic Balkans, and then going uh, northwards, generally drier than all through there. To the north of that, it's wetter than average, where we have, a, have below pressure, of course. So, Ireland, UK, the low country belt from the Netherlands into Germany, towards Poland, and then northwards through Denmark to Sweden, Norway, and Finland, uh, looking uh, wetter than average through those areas. And then we're back shofting southwards. We do find some of these wetter conditions extending down the far eastern side of Europe. So there's the Black Sea looking rather wet, uh, Greece looking uh, rather wet as well. So the north and the far east and southeast are uh, wetter than average, but southern southwestern regions drier than normal and very hot in Spain. Right, week two will be the 2nd to the 9th of June. Not a lot of change really. Low pressure continues in the north and the west of Europe. High pressure 
bit of a south of that uh, through most of the Mediterranean. So the broader westerly type pattern looks like it's continuing uh, there, a return of the westerly, which is something that we do get quite often in June, of course. Uh, 500 middle bar heights, again, placing a trough through the north of the west of Europe with a ridge um, further southwards and the jet stream of wind flow doing something of it like that. Uh, so, week two, temperature anomaly. When it's cooler in the northwest, so there must be more of a northwesterly component to uh, the, the wind direction there, I think. Because we do see, like, a cool down in the west of the northwest. You're actually slightly below average for the UK, which is something we haven't seen for a very long time. France, the low countries, Germany, Denmark, and southern parts of Sweden and Norway uh, looking a little bit on the cooler side well probably you include Ireland in that uh, uh, in most cool conditions as well I would have thought more southern parts of Europe still looking very warm to hot though and we've got to Spain again and, and into North Africa Three, six degrees above average. And that heat extending through out of the Mediterranean, really. So right way from Spain all the way over to Greece and Turkey. It looks hotter than normal. And we go up the eastern side of Europe and we find the heat through there as well. Anywhere from about central Poland eastwards to the Black Sea. And then north into Russia coming out with above average temperatures. Arctic portions of Sweden and uh, Norway and Finland also are coming out hotter than average or warmer than average in that week. And the uh, 500, the precipitation only, I should say, uh, looks like that. So, again, it's a pretty wet scene across many central northern western parts of Europe. Wet weather may be pushing a bit further eastward, so that's not quite as wet for France, below coast of the UK, but still above average. But looking very wet in towards Denmark, and again, around those Baltic sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and the Lithuania and going northwards in towards Finland, uh, Norway and Sweden. We're looking at wet through those areas. Down, down across southern Europe, Spain, Portugal, dry and average. Central part of the bed, dry too. And into Greece, Turkey, looking drier than average. Going northwards into the Balkans as well, uh, looking uh, rather drier than north. So it's in the south and in the southeast corner, but we have the driest weather. Central, northern and western areas looking pretty wet there. Week 3 will be the night to the 16th of June. A uh, bit of a change here. So we've got higher pressure then starting to appear again across the central and western parts of Europe. The trough of low now being pushed into the far north and northeast of Europe. 500 millibar height anomaly showing that rich building across western, southern and southwest portions of Europe. Again, lower pressure is through here and then higher pressure is over there right okay let's have a look at the temperature anomaly then so warming up for the uk and ireland which is france as well still hot through spain and portugal three six degrees above average in the middle of june gonna be very hot there i would have thought and over on the far eastern side of europe above average temperatures especially into um Turkey and going northwards through the Black Sea up in southwest of Russia. However, the central portion of Europe actually looks quite cold, or below average anyway. <laughs> it's not going to be cold, is it, in June? But below average uh, from the low countries, right way over towards Ukraine, especially through these previous centuries, you're seeing eastern Germany into Poland and going northwards as well. Below average temperatures or average to below through uh, large portions of Scandinavia and Nordic Europe. And precipitation wise, so the driest weather now is in the west. So France will be particularly dry and uh, North Af and um, North Spain down into central parts of Spain as well. North Africa all dry up and normal. Going northwards to the UK and Ireland, dry conditions coming back there. As well, so the unsettled start to June doesn't look like it lasts too long, and then uh, we see above average precipitation, particularly in that northeastern corner again around Finland and into the uh, Baltic Sea states, into the northwest of Russia. That's where we're wetter than normal. Week four, be the 16th to the 23rd of June. 
high pressure well and truly in control across uh, many parts of Europe. Low pressure appearing down towards Spain and Portugal. That could be a heat low, so probably not producing all that much in the way of uh, precipitation. And as far as uh, 500 millibar heights go, again, we see the ridge through the western portion of Europe. So definitely a change in the middle of the second half of June to a more anti-cyclonic signal. Becoming very warm, potentially quite hot, I think, through the western side of uh, Europe there. Ireland, the UK, France, Spain, Portugal, into the low countries of Germany. It certainly hints at uh, the possibility of some very warm conditions. The far east of the north east of Europe seeing average precipitation, uh, seeing average temperatures. And precipitation-wise, we look like that. So many areas coming out dry and out, particularly the western portion of Europe, but also extending into the south and the south east as well. It looks like high pressure is really taking over across much of uh, Europe there, second half of June. Just in the far north and northeast of Europe, does it look a bit wetter? Right, well, that's your third day forecast done, but let's go through weeks five and six data before we go. So week five, people 23rd to the 30th of June. Um, well, that looks a bit mysterious. A lot of pressure through the med and into the east and south east Europe. Otherwise, let's put in uh, a question mark. 500 millibar heights. Um, though maybe hinting at the, the, the high pressure of pulling out into the Atlantic a bit and possibly, possibly dropping in uh, a trough uh, a little bit like that. That is speculative. Um, temperature anomaly as well. Still above average in much of uh, Western Europe and into South Europe as well. And precipitation wise, well, it's weakening still with five weeks away, but uh, largely on the drier side still through West Europe. Then into July, the uh, week six, which is the 3rd of June, 7th of July, into July, not like that. So low pressure or lower pressure appearing through the west of Europe and into south of Europe as well. Remember, a lot of this low pressure in the south of Europe are going to be heat lows triggered by very high temperatures, but uh, with dry air, which is what we see in the middle, in the middle of summer, generally they don't produce all that much in the way of precipitation. I have to wait until the end of the summer into the autumn often for wet weather down in the May. So it's not quite as dramatic as it looks. 500 millibar heights look like that. Perhaps a bit of a blocking signal starting to appear over towards Greenland, maybe. Uh, Temperature-wise, largely above average in most places. Amputation. Well, that's the evidence, isn't it? Like, still dry across much of the, uh, uh, across much of bed. But with some specific areas, maybe getting some thunderstorms and some downpours. But quite a lower pressure because it's the middle of summer. The air is very dry, and those lows are not able to, uh, you know, trigger um, precipitation. Further northwards, uh, well, not much of a signal. We are six weeks away now, so we've pretty much lost the signal. Now, I think the uh, overall idea for the ECM, anyway, is that uh, we're going to have, uh, many parts of Europe are going to have an anticyclonic start to, uh, a cyclonic start to June, I should say, unsettled start with low pressure, and then we transition as we go through June to higher pressure. Uh, so, probably an improving month, starting off a bit mixed, and then it turns uh, drier and warmer, maybe hotter as it goes along. Right, well, that's your third day. Look at that. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll be back a little bit later on. We take the 14 day. This one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.